Knopf tied for first place now, one of three teams with a win here. And they look very good. They're one of three teams with an unmodified roster over the last couple of months there. They looked coordinated, as Jot talked about. It's a scary team. Yeah, and they should. They've been playing together for a long time. They all made the move over here together, and that really should bring a team together. It definitely has. Uh, they're a very cohesive unit. Yeah, one thing I actually really liked was there's an interview with one of the players who says, I want to win the Season 4 World Championship for America. <laughs> right? They're coming in, and they're fully embracing that culture, too, which is, I, I like that. I was, I was always like, well, you know, with the team sort of importing themselves over and choosing to be an American team, but coming from China, are they going to make the transition to be an American team, I think it's actually their goal here. And, and so it's a team, I think it's, it's going to be a fun team to watch as they grow throughout yeah. the series. Yeah, and this game particularly, I have to say, they had a really good plan. Um, this Pobelter versus Xiao Xiao was obviously a very crucial matchup to them. They had an early roam after taking the side turret, sending yep. two people mid to get that kill on Pobelter. And that's where that CS lead that uh, they were talking about, Xiao yep. Xiao over Pobelter, because he got pressured early. And that wasn't the last time that they showed up mid either. No. They said the top laner there, everybody repeat ganks at Pobelter, and you can see it definitely flustered Pobelter. He had an off game. Yeah, he he missed a lot of ultis. There was deaths where he just didn't cast on a teammate or times where he got chunked out without casting on himself before getting silenced. And I do want to keep talking about the, the rotation of the mid lane, though, because we've had this evolution of the lane swap metagame, right? So back in, like, Season 2, it's like, well, you freeze it out, you two-on-one, maybe you dive the guy if he defends his turret. Then we fast-forward to, like, the beginning of Season 4 here, and it's like, oh, it's like 4 v zeros, and you, you go hard for the turrets, you kill two of them, then you reset your lanes. Now we're at a point where it's slowed down substantially, and you've got, like, two-on-zeros. When you've got a two-on-zero, you can leave the AD carry by himself, and the support can go roam. Like, now on two-on-zeros, now the mid laner's got all the attention instead of none of the attention because people are freed up to go do other things. It's really fun how it keeps kind of transitioning. And he should know that because he knows everyone's on that bottom side. Yeah. Um, and what you got to do is have either ward coverage or play to the other side of the map where you actually have control. Uh, yeah. So let's bring up a replay here uh, yeah. so that we get something on the screen for you guys and you can see what we're talking about. Uh, this one is uh, the early kill onto No Name after the invade, I believe. So yeah, let's roll it. This is just, no, 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 this is just one ward here from EG that gets Snoopy uh, the ability to set this one up, by the way. There's that one pink ward in the river by Dragon that Snoopy bought very early, and he spent a lot of time getting down there and positioning that vision. That's how important vision is and how close EG are to making a comeback. You see, they get two kills off of this. That one pink ward in the little pixel bush down there awards them a huge boost of confidence, a big comeback in this. And you can see at that time, LMQ actually had regular vision wards all over the jungle. Yeah. That's why No Name goes for this invade, because he feels confident that they have complete control over it. They can see everything. He's catching them off guard, but he doesn't walk through that tiny bush, doesn't see the pink ward. <laughs> it cost him his life yeah. as well as Moore's life. Yeah, I'm surprised that, like, I know at the beginning of the season we're like harping on it. It's like, man, you guys got to walk through that brush and attack move through it. And it's still happening. If you're new to the NALCS, maybe you haven't learned yet. <laughs> guys, those brushes are very important. Yeah, and that was kind of the story of this game. Is And I know Jat talked about it during the commentary, is that LMQ is kind of playing everything else right, but EG was, like, finding these fights. And, like, the actual battles tended to go EG's way for the first 20 minutes or so. They kept finding team fights that worked out. And... When you've got Thresh peeling for a Kogma, you tend to have pretty good team fights. Uh, LMQ, though, they managed to find so many good pickoffs, though. They would flank around, Xiao Wei Xiao would make individual plays, and, and that was how they got their way in. Yeah, I do want to talk more about Xiao Wei Xiao revisiting this LMQ um, using the pick advantage and the vision advantage, because Xiao Wei Xiao on LeBlanc, obviously they want to get him ahead early. They want to send an assassin at a split pusher. That's how you. That's the oldest way of dealing with split pushers. You send a more powerful assassin to kill him. Kale, this new Kale build, a lot has been said about it. This is a purely AOE far either for shoving a wave really fast yep. or for team fighting. This is not the same old Kale build. You do not have your death cap. You do not have a lich band. You can't burst people down. You have to play it differently. Mm -hmm. And Pobelta, we saw, he flashes in, tries to get a kill with the Q, does not turn out for him. Yep. This Kale build is all about damage over time. It's sustained damage. Yes. When you play against a LeBlanc, you have to either use your ult on yourself very early before you get silenced, or you're not going to have any damage because you need to be auto-attacking the entire time. Exactly. So, you know, we talked about kill going for the team fight build. EG were winning team fights. We have a second replay, actually, of EG winning a dragon fight around 14 minutes in, and a lot of it is really awesome. You can get that clip on your screen. It starts out with Crapo being amazing. Uh, if we want to actually roll this clip out, I wanted to highlight how awesome Crepo does here. So it's a great solo flare by Moore. He pegs Yellow Pete. This is like the obvious uh, engage, but that play was awesome. 
The box stops the engage because Ackerman doesn't get in either, and Yellow Pete's Void who stops the engage as well. There's a really good ulti to keep Krepo alive from Pobelter as well, and it's just clean up at this point. So, yeah, Krepo deserves a lot of praise for that play, but Pobelter, we gave him some flack before. He basically, by zoning Xiao Wei Xiao out at the beginning of this fight, for all intents and purposes, he killed Xiao Wei Xiao for that fight. Yep. They had no mid laner that entire fight. That was a four on five fight. So Pobelter, after zoning out Xiao Wei Xiao, he then joins, adds that sustained damage that we're talking about yeah. from the auto attacking Kale and decimates the fight. So that was an instance where Pobelter performed extremely well on this champion. Yep. And the, the build with the Runon's Hurricane, by the way, the side things don't splash, but they do apply the magic damage from your Righteous Fury, right. as well as the passive, as well as the magic damage from your Nashers. So it's a very strong build and it does put out a lot of AoE damage, um, but like we said, sustained. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the thing is, is uh, I guess I kind of misspoke when I very first spoke when I said uh, LMQ is one of three teams with unchanged rosters, the other two being Complexity and Cloud9. This is still ET's old roster, I guess, so half the teams <laughs> are still... unchanged right now. Yeah, it's so far unchanged. So yeah, and that was a team with coordination, right? Like the, the team fights, the five of them working together, that did work out by and large. So hey, that's going to work for them, but uh, they're going to have a new AD carry um, next, uh, I guess, tomorrow which will be interesting to see for is like, you know, does the new champion pool change much? Do they get to do other things with that one? So that'll be something to watch out for. So uh, also I kind of liked Inox's split pushing Kha'Zix. I think he went 4-3-4. and four. He did pretty well for himself. That was mm -hmm. still the style they were going. Uh, Snoopy, Elise, Ancient Golem going for the tank stats. Kale there as well. Uh, I remember chat talking about, well, if you ban away the support mid laners, then you don't get to turn fighters into tanks. But I mean, with Kale, that kind of works. And like... Well, if works. everybody on your team is calling for a Kale ult, then it doesn't okay, really sure. work. Because you want to use it on Kog'Maw, you want to use it on Kha'Zix, you want to use it on yourself as Kale too. Yeah. So everybody needs that ultimate, they've only got one. It's true, but like, theor like theoretically, like optimal play computers are playing for us, like it would work just because Thresh can stop uh, the Shivana and the Leona, so that like you're not kind of getting a uh -huh. weed down. If you block damage with yeah, that, and then and then LeBlanc is telegraphed, right? She's gonna DFG someone. You're gonna see who she goes for. Generally speaking, I feel like you can play around that. It's super freaking hard. Theoretically, that comp would work. There were some team fights as well where people were dead and Popelta still had his ulti. Yes. So you not that easy to no, it's deal not. with that quick damage. When you die and have a second, the reflex is kind of difficult. When the thing's going on, you're talking. Maybe you sneeze accidentally and your hands are on the keyboard. Who knows? All kinds of weird ways it can go. So LMQ, of course, they did amazing. We talked about bursting people out. Uh, there's actually one more replay we want to show up here. This is LMQ. About 23 minutes into the game, they get a nice collapse on the mid lane, if we can get that replay up on your screen. This is one, actually, that we should take some time to kind of set up where everyone's coming from. You can see a scattering of icons all around the minimap. Yeah, pretty good ward coverage from both sides, and both sides are pinging. Everyone knows what's happening coming into this fight, and they both have the plans. Teleports abund abundant teleports. All right, so he rolls out and actually starts close to 4v4. Kale's going to join pretty soon. Lucian Kha'Zix is still away, but the engage, it's basically a two-man AoE, and Krepo doesn't get to stop anyone from engaging because he's stunned by Solar Flare when Ackerman comes in. And it's a pretty easy pick on an Inox. Okay, he does eventually get out with the Kale ulti, but it's already fighting down a man, which just gets it more and more difficult. You finally got some some auto attacks down from Poe Belter, but he gets traded back. And, you know, Yellow Pete's not in a good spot anymore. Like, if the fight starts and LMQ's already surrounding you, there's no way for EG to get out. Kreppel can't disengage when he's already dead. Exactly. They ha they've been corralled here into this middle of the entire map, the center of the map here. That's where you don't want to be stuck as a Kog'Ma team with yeah. immobile AD carry. And if Thresh is close to you, he's not going to lantern you anywhere. Yeah. Pabelter was not at the there at the beginning of the fight, so they didn't have the crucial um, ulti that they need to block a lot of the yeah. saved beginning Kreppel. damage. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, not turning out well for them. Yeah, so you talked about immobile AD carries getting picked off. I always got to say as an AD carry player, when my team's winning and they're the engaged team, it's really easy to play in the back lines, but Vasily on Lucian had an amazing game for himself here, right? Started out with kind of mundane lanes and one to fight up against, but overall 9-0-6, always there for the cleanup, always got to put damage down. This is a champion he will go to time and time again. It works out for him. Does work out very well, and congratulations to LMQ. Good first game here in the North American LCS. I'm sure they're pleased. Yeah, and pretty good stuff for these guys. So we're going to take a quick break so we can sift through our Twitter mailbag 